Hi and welcome back to Processing Video Tutorials. In the previous video we took a look at how to get the x and y values for our ball and how to fix the bouncing problem that we had. Now the question for this video is what happens if we create multiples of these balls? So what I'm going to do here is create a new ball representation called ball2. And remember that what this does is it gets what we defined here in this class and it puts it here into a new ball object. And then what we're going to do is copy this, paste it down here, and simply change ball for ball2. And then check that everything has been changed to ball2, and then we're going to press play. But we don't see anything different. And you may wonder why. But really, the answer is, if we go to our ball definition here, we're starting always at 400, 100. So if we press play, both our balls are one on top of another, so we can't really see any change. What we want to do in this video is make sure that when we define a new ball object, like ball or ball 2, that we can give it different starting positions so that we'll be able to see a change and what this is called is a constructor. The way to define a constructor is simply say public and then the ball or rather the class name and then treat it like any other normal method. We can do here is give it two parameters for x and y and then say that this dot x is x, this dot y is y, and remember that what this does is define or rather set the x value to be equal to the parameter that we're given it. And now inside these two brackets we need to give it the x and y values that we want our ball to start in. So for the first ball we want to start at 400 comma 100 as it did previously and for the other ball we're going to start at 50-50. Now we can see that there are two balls on the screen where previously we could only see one. They are both bouncing at the same speed and also they're both bouncing only up and down. If we go back to our ball class and instead of only having the x and y parameters here we include the other three values dy, dx and size then we can change all the other properties as well. Which means we can now create balls with different sizes, speeds and initial locations. So this ball is going to have the same values 400, 100, 0, 5 and 50 like here 400, 100, 0, 5 and 50 and the other ball can have other values. For example, it's going to move 10 on the x-axis, 2 on the y-axis, and it's going to be slightly smaller, half the size of the other one. And we see it disappear on the right because we're only checking for the y-values here. So the solution for this is to check not only the y values for the height and zero, but also the x values for the width and zero. And we're going to do that in the very next video. So for now, we've learned how to initialize a constructor and how to change the initial properties of our balls and also how to create multiple balls in our program. So in the next video, we're going to have a look at how to we can bounce on both the X and the Y planes. I'll see you in the next video.